but he won't pitch in the league championship series. No, Cologne left off the ALCS playoff roster because of inflammation. His throwing shoulder could be back for the World Series. If the Angels get past the White Sox. Let's start there then, huh? Game one of the Sox Angels series. Halos, well, they've been moving about, huh? Three games, three cities, three time zones in the last three days. Three strikes, you're out. There you see the travels. Glad to see somebody got out of Newark. Since Sunday, they've spent time in four airports, logged more than 4,100 air miles, more time in the air than they've been in stadiums. They're the first team in postseason history to play three games in three different stadiums in three days. Jose Contreras going for the Sox, warming up with a softball. Helps to stretch out his fingers, apparently, and it's good to have good hands behind you. Flat Guerrero thrown out by Juan Uripe deep in the hole. That is an excellent play. We go to the second. No score. Garrett Anderson facing Contreras. Anderson. Brother, can you hit one as far as you can? Unloads deep to right. Angels 4-0 in postseason games when Anderson homers. Would it be five? It's his third of this postseason. one the Angels. Top third, two on. No out. Sean Figgins lays down a perfect bunt. Got to move the runners over. They're at second and third. Everybody moves up 90 feet. Small ball working there. Next batter, Orlando Cabrera. Chopper to third. Joe Creedy fields it. Takes a little too long trying to get home. Then it goes over to first. Everybody's safe. Cabrera. Finley scores 2-0 Angels. Now it's first and third. Vlad Chopper back to Contreras. And instead of going home, he tries to start the 1-4-3 double play. Teddy Aguchi fires it way high. Adam Kennedy scores. And look at Cabrera. Just making one of those plays. It's not in the box score, but it helps you win. Bottom third now, A.J. Brzezinski at the plate. Browns went into hole. Hey, there's Cabrera again. Sox aren't missing this guy, are they? That'll keep the bases empty. Next man, Joe Creedy. He has his first career postseason home run, and the Sox are on the board. Yes. 3-1. Bird going on three days rest. Held up pretty good through this one. 3-2 as we go to the seventh. Darren Erstead on second. Contreras gets Finley swinging with a nasty fork ball. Contreras escapes the jam. Meanwhile, pitching coach Bud Black talking over with Bird. Be careful. Try not to hit Aaron Rowan. All right, so we messed that one up. Bird, that's the end for him. Six inning pitch, five hits, two earned run. Excellent start. Staying in the seventh now. One out. Scott Shields facing Creedy. A.J. Brzezinski tries to feel second. Namir Molina, and that's Benji gunning him down. He threw out two runners in this one. Still 3-2. Vlad at the plate against Contreras as we are into the eighth. He's nearing 100 pitches. Vlad. Good wood, but not far enough. Eventually, Aaron Rowan's going to come over there and handle that one. Contreras, eight and a third. Score remains 3-2. Bottom eight, man on now for Scotty Pod. Pesednik, smart baseball. Let's move him over, get the bunt down. But Pesednik, a catalyst of this team, twice fails to get him over. And then on the one-two pitch, strikes out looking. So runner staying at first. A couple of batters later, Jermaine Dye comes through with the clutch two-out hit. But since his man's on first, now moving with the pitch. He's going to have to stop at second. So they're unable to move the run over. He would have scored perhaps if he had second. Instead, nothing. And then Paul Canerco, 40 homer man. That one, though, long way from clearing the wall. Scott Shields gets Canerco. We go to the ninth man on first. Nobody out. Here's Rowan facing Francisco Rodriguez. Going to lay down the bunt. In him over. Well, Pablo Zuna out at second. Bounding off the mound. They take care of it. Second time in the late innings, the Sox unable to execute the bunt, which is so much a part of what they did for 162 games this year. And then K-Rod gets Joe Creedy swinging to end it as the Angels win it. 3-2. Game one win. Seems like a good idea. Except game one loser in the ALCS advanced to the World Series in the past three years. Sox had won eight in a row. Jose Contreras nine in a row until Tuesday. 14 combined hits, seven for each side. 14 different players. That's a new postseason record. Nobody had two hits. Everybody had just one. Angels made the most of Garrett Anderson's knock. They are now 11-1 when he drives in a run during the postseason. Game one thoughts, comments, opinions, and, of course, boarding passes, please. It's been a blur, and, and as I, I said earlier, I think the playoffs, just in the experience I've found here since 2002, sometimes they're painfully slow with things developing, with the off days, with every game, every pitch being with the intensity it brings. Uh, this is almost a breath of fresh air to play this many games and just go out and play baseball because that's when the fun is and that's what we did tonight. Well, obviously we're disappointed. I think we had a chance to, chance to play better. I think we not do what we do all year long, but I think tomorrow's another day. We gotta, I know we're going to show up and come back and play hard. It's not a must win yet. I mean, uh, you know, I don't think you know, too many guys are you know, keeping their heads down. I, you know, I'm sure everybody's going to come back, keep their head up, and uh, go get them tomorrow. We knew they were going to 
bring everything they had. We didn't think they were going to not show up and play hard. I mean, you know, we, we didn't, like I said, you know, they played pretty well. We didn't play very well at all. I mean, we left too many guys on base. We didn't uh, execute when we needed to execute. And, uh, you know, give them credit. They came out and played hard. All right, the Angels now just the bus over to the team hotel. That'll be a nice change. All that traveling, the team snaps a five-game losing streak in the postseason series openers. A full night of playoff baseball Wednesday, which means a full night of all three Molinas. Remarkably, it was a catcher not named Molina behind a crazy finish in Chicago. ALCS Game 2, White Sox looking to even their series with the Angels at a game of peace. Mark Burley on the mound. Chicago looking for its first ever LCS win at home. Up 1-0 in the second. Burley gets Garrett Anderson, then Rob Quinlan. Burley struck out four Wednesday, did not walk a better. Bottom two, we play America's favorite game. Name that Molina. Benji at DH, Jose at catcher, Aaron Rowan at the plate. To right, Vlad Guerrero's out there. He kicks it around a little bit. It's ruled an error on Vlad. Meanwhile, Rowland is still running. Here's John Miller. Rowland's coming around second, digging for third, and the relay throw is thrown wildly. Rowland gets up at third, heading home. The ball is tracked down by Quinlan. He throws home the tag. He's out at the plate. Tagged by Molina, never try and score on a Molina. Yep. Barely got Rowan. A great heads up play by Rob Quinlan there. Fifth inning, Quinlan. Another right handed bat in there to face Burley, and it works out. His first career postseason homer ties it at one. The only run allowed by Burley, who went the distance, gave up five hits. Bottom five, Garrett Washburn drills Tadahito Aguchi. That loads the bases. Washburn working for the first time in 11 days after a fever and throat infection. He leaves after four and two thirds. In comes Brendan Donnelly, and as you can see, there's nowhere to put him. Bases full of White Sox, and Donnelly gets Jermaine Dye on three pitches. A huge strikeout. Angels escape the jam. We go to the sixth inning. Angels trying to get something going. There's a man on for Vlad the Impaler, only it's the 6-4-3 DP. Nothing for L.A. of Anaheim there. We go to the seventh inning. As Burley applauds, it's Juan Uribe. Runner on second is Joe Creedy. Uribe to left. Garrett Anderson is there, and Creedy gets himself hung up between second and third. He's doubled off. Ozzie Guillen would argue to no avail, and the Angels are out of that inning. Eighth inning. Man on third for former Red Sox great Orlando Cabrera. Deep fly to left. Scott Pudsednik is at the wall. Burley and the White Sox out of that jam. Still 1-1. Two outs in the ninth. Here we go. A.J. Pruszynski misses strike three. Watch the Angels run off the field. Pruszynski runs to first. What's going on? You'll see plate ump Doug Eddings ruling catcher Josh Paul did not catch the ball before it hit the dirt. Eddings clearly raises his right arm and closes his fist. He says to indicate strike three. The Angels thought Eddings was signaling the batter is out. Pruszynski runs to first. Paul thinks the inning is over. He flips the ball to the mound. Umpires let Pruszynski remain at first. They upheld the call after a delay of about four minutes. Pablo Azuna pinch runs. And there he goes. Steals second. So now the winning run is in scoring position. Joe Creedy is up there. Ozina on second, two outs. Well picked by Escobar. Creedy hits a drive. Left field to the corner. This one is off the wall. Ozuna scores. It's a White Sox winner. And the ALCS is tied in a game apiece. Burley's five hitter is the first complete game of this postseason. It's the first ever LCS win at home for the White Sox. And it evens the series 1-1 as they head to Anaheim for Friday's game three. That's John Garland versus John Lackey. So two questions on Wednesday's controversial play. One, did Josh Paul catch the ball? Two, was plate ump Doug Eddings signaling strike or out? Here's George Smith. On the night when the story could have been the White Sox base running blunders, A.J. Pruszynski's decision to run to first after a strikeout in the ninth put the focus squarely on the umpires. When an umpire calls a guy out and you're the catcher and I've caught my share of them, he's out. He didn't call swing. He rung him up with his fist and said, you're out. My interpretation is uh, that's my strike three mechanic when, when it's a swinging strike. Usually if there's a ball in the dirt, they're yelling in our ear, no catch, no catch. And I didn't hear any of that. You know, you're taught if the third strike's in the dirt, you run. And I didn't see Josh, you know, Josh didn't tag me. I think he thought he caught it. And uh, I just ran, and luckily it worked out. And although the game-winning run was unearned, both sides agree the White Sox victory was not. You know, there's a lot of focus on that play, but 
We didn't play at a high enough level tonight to win the ball game. That's the bottom line. The ball bounced your way. You had a chance. You know, this is a game by inches, and uh, we take advantage of the two inches help us today. Do we feel lucky? No? Did they feel lucky when they won last night? We we're very disappointed in the call, um, and it did have a big effect on this game. White Sox manager Ozzie Guillen said he didn't look at a replay of the incident because he didn't want to, and he was visibly upset after the game. That's because he said he felt all of the focus would be on the way the game ended instead of the nine-inning, five-hit gem thrown by Mark Burley. At the ALCS in Chicago, George Smith, ESPN. No, oh, sir, not us. Just the fellas with the Angels and Chicago stitched across their jerseys. Game three, ALCS home team trying to leave that ninth-inning controversy of game two behind. And before the game, well, the umps announced. Well, six of them walked out. They were only booing the one fella, Doug Eddings, home plate up for game two. He is out there in right field for this one with a little extra police presence. First inning, John Lackey, 2-0, and oh, ERA about two and a half and seven postseason starts entering Friday on his last three decisions against the Sox. But here, Jermaine Dye gets him. Five-game hitting streak in the postseason for Dye. Scotty Pesednik scores one up in White Sox. Next batter in the lineup, big thump of Paul Konerko, but just one for eight in the first two games of the series. Lackey, you want that pitch? No, don't want that pitch. How about this pitch? I'd like to have that pitch back. Paul Konerko, two-run shot, 3 nothing. Chicago. A.J. Pruszynski's pumped up because in 12 pitches, Chicago matches its run total in the first two games. Take another look. Lackey's curveball, not enough hook. Hang it up there. Bang. Konerko, free trip around the base. Starter for Chicago, John Garland, first career postseason appearance. Just shut down the middle of the Angel offense. Bottom one, Vlad Guerrero. This guy has had a poor postseason. That ain't helping it. Chopper, Teddy Aguchi grabs it, throws to first DP. Angels potential threat gone. Still 3 nothing Sox in the second now. Garland facing Garrett Anderson. Both these kids went to the same high school. Seven years apart, but apparently no school spirit there at all. Later in the inning, Darren Erstead. Let's hear it for Herbie Husker, huh? He's going to rope one into right field. There it goes, and now he's going to start humping it around the bases. He's got two easy, and he's thinking, I'll try three. Jermaine Dye up with it. Tadahito Aguchi, relay, and Teddy gets him easily. Another potential angel threats over and Ozzie again. You like it when you guys throw the ball and catch it. Bottom four now. Garland hadn't pitched since October 1st. Full tank of juice gets Orlando Cabrera. Then we move to the six, five nothing Chicago now. And well, this time Cabrera gets better measure of Garland here. Either that or he hit him right on the bat. Two run homer to left. First career postseason homer in 91 at bats for Cabrera. The Angels trim the deficit to five to two. We check out the swing again. And you know, you got to swing hard today. It may rain tomorrow. Or if you're in Connecticut, it may rain the next nine tomorrow. <laughs> we go to the ninth. John Garland trying to finish off the complete game. He's up against Vlad the Impaler. And Vlad again helps him out. Fly ball to right for out number 27. And the Sox win at 5 2. Garland's first postseason start a gem. Four hit complete game goes the route. Sox 2 1 series lead now two games from a spot in the series. Garland unfazed by the homer by Cabrera. He retired the next 10 after that. Canerco just four for 20 in the postseason before his big whack. Irvin Santana, Freddie Garcia in game four on Saturday, and both those guys going to have to bring it to match Garland's outing on Friday. We'll be able to come in uh, first postseason game, come on, come on the West Coast where we haven't had uh, too much success over the past few years, um, and able to go out there and, and uh, do that for my team. Uh, it was pretty exciting, and it's something I'll remember. He showed people today, you know, he's, uh, he was throwing strikes. I, I think one of the best game pitch. You know, he pitched real well this year. But I think that's the best, uh, you know, best I've seen throw, you know, uh, all year long. On the offensive side, we've got to start start getting some things going, get a little little continuity. It's not the, you know, it's not the end of the world. It's, uh, you know, our second loss. But uh, we, you know, there's a lot of baseball to be played. And if we get into our game, we're going to be right in this series. The complete game win for Garland gives the White Sox three straight starts of more than eight innings pitch. Contreras, Burley, they have the other two. Everybody going deep into the game. This is only the third time this has happened in the postseason over the past 30 years. 86 Astros and the 79 Orioles were the others. ALCS game four in Anaheim. White Sox a chance to take a 3-1 series lead over the Angels. Urban Santana in trouble in the first. Two on for Paul Konerko. His second straight game with a first inning home run, just like that, 3-0 White Sox. Konerko will be a free agent at the end of the season. 
Kitching. Bottom two, first and third. Steve Finley in a big spot here. It's a 4-6-3. It ends the inning, but Finley is upset with plate ump Ron Culpa. What's going on here? Well, you'll see Finley hit the catcher's glove. Should have been awarded first base. A.J. Prasinski said it might have just nicked it. It was so loud the umpire couldn't even hear it. Would have set up the Angels nicely. Instead, they get nothing. Bottom six, down six to Vlad. The impaler to third, Joe Brady. Vlad hitting 063 in the series, one for 16. Top eight, A.J. Prasinski up there. He homered earlier in the game. And here we go again. He strikes out, ball is dropped, but this time it's Benji Molina. Name that Molina. Tags him out. That's Ninth Benji. inning. Thank you. You're welcome. Freddie Garcia. America loves to play. That's, That's true. Freddie Garcia went all the way. Six hitter following the birth of his new daughter, Sophia, on Wednesday. And the White Sox win 8-2. Chicago's pitchers have allowed just eight runs in this series and only 17 runs in their seven postseason games. Meanwhile, Angel bats have vanished. Guerrero, Anderson, and Benji Molina, a combined five for 44 with three RBI. So the White Sox can win the AL pennant in Sunday night's game five. Freddie Garcia turns in the third straight complete postseason game by a White Sox starter. You know, I was on vacation, though. You know, got like eight days, you know, no pitching. You had a kid, too, didn't you? Yeah, and, uh, you know, I got there and I was <laughs> strong, you know, and throw a lot of strike, you know, make good pitch, you know. That's all. Last two uh, clinch, it was in the row. We clinched in Detroit, then we clinched in Boston. Hopefully tomorrow we do it, you know, it should be nice. It's not, we have to be prepared for next day, but tomorrow is another game. Tomorrow is a big game for us. Maybe the biggest game we're going to play this year, and hopefully we come up with the victory. Oh, we know the bullpen's rested anyway. Freddie Garcia, <laughs> the third consecutive complete game of the postseason by a White Sox pitcher. First time this has happened, by the way, in postseason play since Seaver, Matt Lack, and Kuzman did it for the Mets against the Reds in the 1973 NLCS. Welcome to Sports Center. The White Sox hoping to party like it's 1959 watching postseason baseball on an NFL Sunday with Stuart Scott and Neil Everett. Only problem with the Chi Sox, their bullpen is probably kind of rusty. Lack of activity, please. Chicago's the first team since the 1973 New York Mets to have three straight complete games in the postseason. Jose Contreras can make it four straight in a trip to the October Classic for the first time in 46 years. Top five. 2 1 Sox. Paul Konerko facing Scott Shields. 2 on, 2 out. Oh, Kernuckle trying to get medieval on kids, but he hits a long out. Already four postseason home runs, not five. Long out. Bottom five, Sean Figgins with a man on. It ain't pretty, but he fists this one to deep right. Figgins hitting only 118 in the LCS. The ball bounces, touched by a fan, ruled a ground rule double. Adam Kennedy held up at third base. Mike Socia comes out to chat, to talk, to say, yo, come on, dog. Replay. Fan clearly touched the ball when it's in play. Ups confer. They ruled that Kennedy would have scored. So he's rewarded home. Tied at two. Booyah! Top seven. Joe Creedy goes out. Hit a career high 22 homers in the regular season. That's his second this postseason. Ties it at three. Top eight. Same score. A.J. Pierzynski in the middle of some controversy. Again, grounds to Escobar. Field swipes at Pierzynski. Pierzynski called out. Pierzynski, Ozzy are livid. Watch this. Escobar tags him with his glove, but his ball in the other hand. The umps would talk about it. They actually got it right. They reversed the call. Now K Rod on facing Joe Creedy. Two on two out. Creedy went wild and on folks. Up the middle. Adam Kennedy fields. Tries to get Aaron Rowan running home. Not in time. White Sox lead 4-3. Creedy, 360-80, hitting the series, seven RBI. Now, White Sox, one out away in the ninth. Let's take a look at the last two times the White Sox were in the ALCS. In 1983, they watched the Orioles celebrate. Didn't make it to the show. Then, a decade later in 93, they saw the Blue Jays celebrate. Southsiders did not make it to the show. They want some of that celebration love. Back to the here and now. Jose Contreras facing Casey Kochman, two outs in the ninth. He has been tough, tough, tough since then. Here's a swing and a ground ball to first. Canerco has it. He steps on the bag. The White Sox have won the pennant. They've won the pennant. The White Sox win here, and they're going to the World Series. Angels, only 27 hits, the fewest ever in an LCS of at least five games. White Sox win it 6-3. to three. Southsiders going to the World Series. Told you about the Angels' 27 hits. 
Vlad Guerrero went one for 20 in the series. Garrett Anderson, three for 17. Benji Molina, two for 17. Plus, the Halos made seven errors in the series. Afterwards, talking about going, finally, to the Big Dog Fall Classic. We take a lot of beating this year, during the year, about my team, and, and we just keep playing. Uh, good thing my players don't listen to what I was saying to, to, to the media, and uh, we stick together. And I think they deserve, they earn it, and, you know, that's why I let them join themselves. You know what? The Chicago White Sox are going to the World Series, and I love every one of those guys in that clubhouse. From day one, we, they came out, we came out and battled. Heart, character, uh, I, I, I can't describe what this is like. It's tough to lose. I can't be disappointed with that group of guys down there because they, they poured their hearts out on the field. Uh, I'm proud to be associated with them. It was a, it was a tough series. Um, it's, it, I, can't, I can't be disappointed in anything about that, that group of guys down there in the Angel Clubhouse. They're, they're beautiful. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's tough to lose. But I'll tell you what, those guys poured their hearts into everything they did out there in the series, and it didn't work out. I think the White Sox bullpen just, you know, stayed at the hotel during the, during the road games. White Sox starters threw 44 and a third of a possible 45 innings. Check this out. Cha Sox, the first team since the 1928 New York Yankees to have four consecutive complete game wins in a single postseason.